hello and welcome to this affinity photo ipad tutorial and this is sort of a follow-up to the pc version which i've just made and which is taken a look at using overlays in the to tone mapping persona now before i get on with the tutorial someone has left a comment below that to pc tutorial about how they would have done it uh, by you know, sort of making a sort of duplication of the layer and then sort of just edit it a bit in tone mapping and then bring it back into the photo persona to edit it better in there which I do agree with um, but the whole point was to show how the overlays work within the tone mapping persona so bear in mind that this way I'm going to show you a sort of a very heavy handy way of editing um, it's not necessarily how you would do it I'm just trying to show you that it is possible sort of to use the overlays sort of to sort of just tinker a little bit with your tone mapping there is overlays also available in the develop persona and you're more likely to have used them in the develop persona so if you know how to use them in a develop persona they will work the same way in the tone mapping persona so let me come off of there and we'll start with this image here and we'll then go to the tone mapping persona if I just click on this question mark as you can see it is at the top the icons it is the second one from the right so if I just tap on that it will move the image into the tone mapping persona and basically what this does is sort of this is an oversimplified sort of description but it will take like a single image or a single layer and sort of make it look like a HDR image now if I let me just check which one it is. So I want the preset studio which is the third one down on the right. If I click on that you get all these different presets that are available that will change the image say for example if I click on the high contrast black and white it will change that into that preset. You could then come to the um, there we go the basics tab and then you have all these adjustments that you could then tinker with that setting so let me just come back to this one and I'll bring it back to the neutral image now in the presets if I hold on the word default and you have various options here so you've got default extreme crazy and James Ritson's customs so with the different categories you can get different presets so if I try that one there flat whites so you can see that there are different presets so that's basically how they work let me bring this back to the defaults and put it back on neutral so that's a very quick description on how the actual tone mapping bit works but the f was it the fourth icon down on the right is the overlays studio if I tap on that the layer that is first is master now this is like the overall image that and layer that we are looking at and you're going to put the overlays above this now the icons above that we have a brush and we have a sort of well, this is the gradient icon and next to that is the delete or you know rubbish icon so I'm going to start with the brush overlay first so I'm going to select the brush and you do have like opacity available and sort of how hard you want it to be like 100% or less and down below you 
have the size hardness and then you can apply it and what have you so I'm going to keep the size as it is and I'm going to start painting let me shut this studio tab down so we can see it so everything that is red is what will be affected by the overlay not overlay sorry the preset that I select to use now this is not going to be a very precise selection I'm just showing this as an example so and let me just reduce the hardness down maybe to 25 and lower the size we're on 500 at the moment so I'll, I'll, I'll lower it down to 200 and that way I can sort of come in a bit closer like I said this is not too mad in fact I've I think I've deleted the dog and there should be an arrays option here yes let me where's the dog oh there he is down there right so I'll come back to the brush and try and avoid taking the dog out right and like I said it's very rough and ready so then if I come back to the default studio and I select uh, the black and white like I said the areas that are red are the only ones that are going to be now affected by that selection so as you can see the image is black and white but the people and the dog are still sort of in the color spectrum so you know you would need to tidy this up to sort of make a better job of it now obviously this is not something that you would possibly use this for there's a better ways of getting this sort of um, idea but it does show how that overlay works so let me select a different image and we're going to go for this one here and again we'll come into the tone mapping persona and we will come to the overlays and this time I'm going to add a gradient and I select the gradient again you have the options up here underneath where you've got opacity and down below you have the options of what type of gradient you want to go for so you've got linear I think my pen I've run out of energy on my pen I have to use my fingers uh, elliptical radial so I'm going to select an elliptical one and from the sun there I'm going to draw out an elliptical gradient and then come to the actual settings and I want to come to I think it's crazy and then down here and pick end of trays so that will only affect the area within the gradient because I've moved around to whichever way I want I just want to keep it in that sun up there like that and if I come back to the overlay studio and I want to now add another overlay on top of this again a gradient so we now have another gradient layer but this time I want it to be linear and I'm going to come up from the bottom just at the horizon like that then come back to the studio uh, preset studio and I think this one was on the default settings 
and pick dramatic you can sort of alter the gradient however you want and if I come back to this studio here I can so you can turn off the studio the overlay to see the effect that is that dramatic is having again I like to turn off and on that effect for that gradient so it's up to you you know whether you like the result and if you do you can turn it off or just delete it but that is how you can use those two types of gradient and when you're happy you can just click apply and then it will bring it back to the photo persona with those adjustments made so just a recap on that if I open this one here which is the black and white version of that same image and I'm going to add a gradient overlay and I'm going to come down from the to the halfway point then come to the preset studio and I'm going to select call and that's going to make that sky area a little bit bluer and then I will come back to the overlay studio se select another gradient about there come back to the presets select the crazy ones and again end of trays shut that studio so I can now have sort of a yellow bottom half of the image and a bluer top half of the image and then just click apply so basically that is how the overlays work much like they do in the develop persona you select an area that you want to sort of locally affect by the adjustment and either use the brush or a gradient to select a certain area then you go to the sort of basic studio and you can make adjustments um, so you can refine those selections either in the tone mapping persona or bring it back it was probably a better option bring it back to the photo persona and do your fine tuning in that because you have more options so hopefully this has been helpful so thank you for watching and goodbye